We're in the Guatemalan boatyard. I worked on some of these leaky windows several years ago, but they had failed to stop leaking. The problem was the rubber gaskets on all the inside and outsides of the aluminum frames. So we were planning to repair the windows again, and to start the gaskets would need to come out. Going in. I fucking love this. Let's just put giant bilge pumps here in this leave this area open on the boat to shrink and come in. Yeah? Yeah, we just have like a like an open we'll just make some roll down clots just to stop the majority. <laughs> yeah, roll let's down just some do, umbrella and let's just put some umbrella there. You're absolutely right. This window was pretty easy to do. Oops! This one's the easiest one to get out, because I didn't work on this one. The aluminum frames that I had glued in more recently would be extremely difficult to get out. I also needed to remove all the aluminum tape that did absolutely nothing to stop the rain from coming in. This window, for example, would not be so easy to extract. Luckily, there are several wood shops very much nearby. Be careful of the wires above you. Walking with the 12 foot. Yeah. And here we go, dingy jousting. Meanwhile, Robbie started drilling holes in the deck. Great! For now I'll do these and then I'll see how they go and then... Since we first stepped foot on this boat years ago, it crackles and pops when we walk near the pilot house. This is a piece of our deck. We drilled through it earlier this year to install the waste tank through deck fitting. It is wood sandwiched between top and bottom layers of fiberglass cloth 
and the resin had some bubbles in it that created voids. You can also see that the resin apparently delaminated from the wood. Whatever all this was, it meant that we would have to fill the space with some of our own epoxy. We miraculously experienced several sunny days in a row, and we poured epoxy until we could not pour any more. The holes sucked up several liters worth. I felt those last. I sanded the deck of all that clear epoxy, and now it was time to bust out the fairing compound to make the deck all nice and smooth again. Dingy project. So I had to grind off all of the fiberglass th that did not adhere to the dinghy, which was basically 90% of the fiberglassing we did was not touching the dinghy. It was up in the air. It was air bubbles. It was, yeah, detached from the dinghy completely. And, you know, I can't leave it like that. We have delamination on the deck, and here we are filling in the voids with uh, expensive, very expensive epoxy, which is a, a great solution. Now the deck isn't creaking anymore, but we created another problem with the dinghy of voids and delamination uh, of the fiberglass from the dinghy. So I wasn't going to keep that like that. I ground it all off. The problem with grinding was it just kind of made the grooves of the dinghy wobbly. There's cracks along all of the chines or all of the, the ribs of the dinghy in the first place, which is what we were fiberglassing it for. But seeing these areas that are potential for voids, uh, what I should have done in the first place was fill them, fill the grooves with uh, fillets of epoxy. In Guatemala, it's not easy to find light and thin fiberglass cloth that will adhere easily to the shape of our dinghy. The superficial lapstrick shape and the thick cloth were turning out to be a bad combination for this project.
it didn't use that much epoxy. I, I filled them all in now and those gaps are less potential for voids. Now I'm going to lay some fiberglass down. And the fiberglass that I'm going to lay this time are going to be in strips. So it's a more controlled laying down of the fiberglass. We'll see if that goes on a little better. We sanded until we felt that the surface was smooth enough to lay down some of that thick old local fiberglass mat. You know, I get to get it off Wait. Whose shoes are we gonna go put it in? Yeah, no, just joking. And they sting really bad? This one, this one's pretty big. And big is good when it comes with scorpions. It's beautiful. It probably glows really nicely, UV. So we've got a very nice UV You're gonna go throw them in the jungle? Yeah. yeah. Even wetting out and applying these small strips turned out to be fairly difficult. It just did not want to adhere. I really had to work it hard to squeeze out all the bubbles until the very last moment before the epoxy would kick and harden. It's set. Yeah, all, all the strips I've done there are already set. Yes, technically I could continue today. I think uh, as long as it's not dry to the touch, I think I could keep on. Oh, the same shit is happening in Beirut right now, but it's not lighting its bombs. It's just like this. Yeah. Bangs, yeah, louder. Lights. Scarier. And finally, the deck was ready to paint. Our neighbor in the boatyard showed us a random act of kindness and gave us an almost unused can of two-part barrier coat. We didn't think that we would have enough barrier coat to cover both the top and the bottom of our boat, so this coat of paint would be very much appreciated for a bonus extra painting round. The only problem now was that we were rushing to lay it all down and then get a white layer of paint down on top of that ASAP. The gray color made the deck so hot to the touch that it burned my feet. This is when your wife's, what is it, five years worth of art degree comes in, she handles the brush like a pro. Of course. My painting is barbaric. 
my spraying is okay I'm a decent sprayer but my brushwork is appalling oh no window <laughs> so you can actually get a close-up of whew, I do feel the vapors the vapors oh So we went through with the old sanding paper and gave the deck a nice yeah. scrub down just to prep it for a proper layer of paint that's and white. Wash. And then you gave it a wash. I, we tried doing it at night because <laughs> the problem with all of this is the heat. The heat of the day is just unbearable. But then we tried doing it at night and there were a million mosquitoes. We so did it at sunset. The problem here is that when it's comfortable for us to be out on the yeah. deck, it's also comfortable <laughs> for mos mosquitoes. mosquitoes. So uh, we didn't really get it done last night. So we were doing it now early this morning. And now we're just waiting for the deck to dry. And hopefully uh, it dries and then we have enough time to paint before it gets too hot and yeah, the paint fries off. Before it starts sizzling, sizzling. as we apply it. Yeah. I would use this smooth, glossy paint to make all the outlines of the deck. All I have to do is pour some in the tray and apply. Total tread. Finally, we're going to have a safer deck. We're not going to slip slide around and bonus we're going to make the deck nice and white so that it will be less hot right now we're sizzling we're boiling so let's get this on i'm really interested to see what it looks like it just looks like chunky chunky paint there's all the tread at the bottom no it's like that's it it's very fine grain sand. If, the, if it's sand, I, I forgot to read the ingredients. The camera kept falling down as the deck burned my feet, but we got that total tread on successfully, another life-changing event on our boat. After 24 hours, it was dry enough to the touch that we prepped for the next layer of paint, and we lightly scuffed the surface with fine grit sandpaper. Look at me. Today, I'm the hoser. Another layer of paint. Another 24 hours and light scuffing. And finally, a third layer of paint in between harsh sunlight and rainstorms. Last time we didn't follow a line. We had to remake the water line based on the old uh, blue slight stripe that you see there. And it went really well because I remember how we did it is you went right to the start and then uh, every couple of meters, like three meters, you you just touched but, it but to I the hull. Also a better, better thing to, to step on. And... Yeah, but I, I think the problem in this case is that you're not stretching it as much. You're doing it bit by bit, so it's always yeah. going to be wobbly. Do you want me to help you do it the way we did it last time? No, because I'm, I'm full. I'm full I, don't, I don't want to cover the old line. I'm trying to use the old line as a, as a reference. I mean, it's fairly good. It's a little... I can see what you mean. It's not perfect. I can see the little wobble. So what's going to happen is we're going to paint, paint the barrier coat and then we got to come back and we got to paint the water line, like the bootstripe, because I sanded slightly into our white paint job, about an inch. I can see that I, I buffed into the hull like an inch where I removed slightly some paint here, or an inch or two inches. I'm trying to get a dry enough day to do this. It's 
been raining and raining. But we managed to find two or three hours to get on the first layer of the total protect barrier coat. And after a non-stop week of rain, we still hadn't managed to get on the next layer of paint after that. Our dry weather had finally run out. Join us next time to see how we managed to get on all the final layers of paint to escape the boatyard. Thank you to everyone who supports the making of these videos. 